tonight on Bondi Rescue. Looking good. What not to wear on Bondi Beach? Show it off. Why not? Have a look at this character. <laughs> High stakes in the lifeguard challenge. Oh, they're getting smoked on the roof. A woman pushes her boyfriend under as she fights for air. There's a drowning. And a surfer reported drowning in huge swells. Is this the tragic result? It's a week before the annual lifeguard Ironman competition. Lifeguards are fine-tuning their fitness and skills for a race that will decide the best watermen on the team. But strangely, there's more discussion about what to wear than who will win. You definitely see a variation on race day in between who likes to wear speedos and who likes to wear board shorts. We just can't do it. I mean, we've got a job to do down here. We've yeah. got a lot of kids around. And... No one wants to see, you know, a bunch of guys with lolly bags for everyone flying around. It's just not the go. It's the great Aussie swimwear debate, where how to cover up is a matter of deep philosophical discussion. The cavemen wore undies like you. We've evolved, mate. You know. these are the new speedos, mate. Well, I reckon. Let's end, end it. Let's just go out and ask, let's them, ask a few of the girls on let's the beach. Let's ask the girls. Let's ask a few guys, too, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> right, let's Andy. do it. G'day, ladies. Hi. How are you? We call it the great Aussie speedo debate. <laughs> we got uh, a lovely guy here, Bisho, wearing these ridiculous looking things. <laughs> and then Brad here in boardies. What do you reckon, girls? We've got to put it to the vote. Well, I don't know. They're just too that's, small. That's, that's too much. <laughs> hey, yeah, what's this one? Put it away. Put it away. <laughs> oh, I like the hammock. You like oh, your speedo? High five. I'm a speedo boy, all the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> show it off. Why not? <laughs> How far do you take the speedos? Well, I uh, do get about the house in them. But... <laughs> yeah. I think the speedos would be much more comfortable they because are. it wouldn't be all wet and flapping around you. Yeah. <laughs> Louder the better. Louder, Louder the, the better. better. More attention the better, yeah. <laughs> Come on, boys, stand yeah, up and show. Give us a show. Give us a show. Oh, I yeah. like the little bow tie. Uh, <laughs> pure <laughs> just a pure set. Just didn't tie them on. <laughs> well, tonight's going to be the decider. We've got the lifeguard race. Whoever wins, Bordies or Sluggos, we'll leave that. That'll break uh, the decision. Bordies. Bordies will win it for sure. Oh, that. On the day of the lifeguard challenge, huge swells put the team on high alert. Then, a disturbing report. A surfer is reported drowning off rocks. Well, there's a report about a surfer, there's a board tomb standing with a body attached. Someone from the public made the report and the police rang Whippity in the tower and notified him of what was going on and they launched the jet ski. Buddy, it's a point I just let you know the, the police water boat is coming out of here. Yeah, Danny's out there on the jet ski and the, the pole air's out there as well and the police boat is now approaching also. Information is sketchy, but the fact the surfer's board was reported tombstoning is cause for major concern. Tombstone's a word used to describe um, when you see a board in the water in a vertical position. If somebody's unconscious, the weight of the body will pull on the leash, which will pull on the board, and it'll, and it'll cause the board to sort of move around in a vertical position. And uh, usually not a good sign. If the surfer is underwater, seconds could make the difference between death and survival. Yeah, Chapa, is there any more updates from the police? The update that I've got is that um, the board was seen last tombstoning between the bull and the boot. Uh, she said where she saw it from North South was out in the headwind. Oh, so it's, like a, it's, this, it's this side of the point. It's this side where the boat is. Um, Danny, you maybe just take a run between that area, close-ish to the rocks to see if he's gone close to the rocks up there. Despite an intense search, there is no sign of the surfer or his board. I think the board would be still there. Yeah, you're right, eh? Board, you know, it's going to be very visible, isn't it? I don't know, you would have seen it by now, anyway. It must be under the bottom or under the rocks or something. She was 100% certain it was like, the No, no, no. If the jet ski keeps searching, safety back on the beach will be compromised. Hoppo must make a pragmatic decision. Looks like the police are calling the search off, so we'll just have to wait and see if, you know, we might get a body floating up later on this afternoon or 
tomorrow, depending on if, if it's there or whether it's a false alarm. Yeah, copy that. I can't see much out here, so one more run, I'll be in. Board riders with team staying bulls, it doesn't happen all the time, but if it is there, you know, it's going to resurface at some stage, unless it's wedged right under the rocks and you might never come back, you might never find it again. But I'd say to probably, with this swirl, once it dies down a bit, it'll um, resurface maybe in a, a day or so, two days' time. Lifeguards return to normal duties, but conditions are becoming increasingly dangerous. Once again, those swimmers in front, please move right over on the sandbank. Move right out of this hole here. It is very dangerous. Big testing out there, got a big crowd, a lot of rips running, swells up. All along the beach, strong currents are carving deep trenches into the sandbanks. For poor swimmers, one wrong step could be disastrous. Mate, pick it up straight across. Again, walk that way. Backpackers' rip is especially bad. Yeah, Hoppo, I've got two heads in trouble down there, mate, and backpackers. Mate, the guy's going under. Hoppo is first out. This guy's struggling. A woman pushes her boyfriend under as she desperately tries to keep her head above water. Mate, the girl's pushing the guy under, says they're drowning. A couple are caught in a deep and powerful rip. The woman pushes her boyfriend under as she tries to save herself. The man is moments from drowning as Hoppo arrives. Maxi's called in on the jet ski. Hoppo gets them onto a sandbank, but they're too frightened to let go of the rescue board. Ben backs up with a second board. The man's OK, but has almost certainly taken in water. Amanda and Simon are Nepalese. They came down for a swim after Simon finished a shift at McDonald's. I feel like you're going to be sick. I feel like you're going to vomit. Yeah, it's so hard. <sighs> <It's too salty>. <coughs> <coughs> so scary. <sighs> yeah, just, we're just playing over there. And just, I don't know, that big wheel just drag over there. Actually, I, I tried to swim, but I just get drawn. It's the closest Simon has come to meeting his maker. I'll tell them I'm so lucky. God sent that man to me. I, I'm serious. I, oh, I think my life is finished at 20 years old. <laughs> uh, I'm happy. Scary feeling? Yeah. I think yeah. God sent you there. I'm serious. Oh, you saved my life. I won't yeah. forget you <laughs> in <laughs> no, my whole life. Bruce. Lisa, sir. Thank you very Thank much. You. Good to see you. Thank you. OK, thanks, mate. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. thanks. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I think I almost <laughs> okay. Then, just after the life and death rescue, an urgent call to the tower. <laughs> A dark shape has been reported floating off nearby cliffs. Is it the surfer who was reported drowning earlier? While the jet ski is being launched at Bondi, Troy swims out alone from nearby Bronte Beach. Just 20. He has never encountered a dead body before. But it's not what he expected. Before the jet ski's even launched, a report comes through. Hang on. Okay. It's a submerged log, not a body. Sorry, just. Do you need to cancel the AMBO, Brad? Yeah, sorry, cancel that. It's... Thank you. Bye. With a surf this big, it's hard to pinpoint exactly what it is until you get out there. False alarm. 
Another false alarms. Day it seems to be a day of false alarms. Yeah, it was pretty scary. Like everyone on the beach was yelling out, "Yeah, body and stuff like that." Semi was looking like we just sussed him out a bit. Just didn't really know what it was. Touched it and yeah, found out it was a log. So it's probably the same size as like a person, like around about six foot. That's why everyone was thinking it was probably a body. Yeah, I'm pretty glad it's a log. I wouldn't have liked to swim back in with, with a body. It would have been pretty. Yeah. No one has been officially reported missing, but what happened to the struggling surfer? It is in your head and it probably will be for the next, you know, couple of days, which is what it normally takes for a body to float up if, if there's one that's uh, submerged. But I mean, it, everyone knows that it's a possibility that there's someone or, you know, someone out there. It's two hours to the lifeguard's annual Ironman race, and the swell is getting bigger by the moment. With such testing conditions, even seasoned lifeguards are getting nervous. Oh, hi, Chapo. Have you seen Bronny? <laughs> it's, honestly, it's five foot and about that deep. It's just smashed on the bank. You guys are dead, mate. You struggle getting out. I'm stoked I'm not doing it, mate. But in the back of lifeguards' minds is a much more serious concern. What happened to the surfer being held under the water against Bondi's cliffs earlier that day? Then, a man comes to the tower with information. Jono? Yeah. What's up? Local surfer Jono was jumping off the rocks yeah, earlier that morning. Um, I was surfing down here and I decided not to paddle off the beach. So I walked around the headland behind the icebergs and um, was going to jump off the rocks. And as I was about to jump off the rocks, a big wave hit me and swept me across the, the ledge. A lady did report that there was someone off the uh, point. So I was by myself, so they probably would have thought, oh, what's this? You know, there's a random surfer just on the rocks being yeah. washed around. Jono was, was almost pretty certainly pretty the surfer there. reported yeah, in trouble. And with no one officially reported missing, the case is closed. At least I guess that gives that sort of mystery a little bit of closure. So thanks for coming down. And... Thankfully, a false alarm. Good luck when you're jumping on next time. <laughs> The Ironman Challenge is just an hour away and big swells still push into Bondi. The course for the swim leg is being laid out by Dino. Dino's off his head. What's his, his off his head? Not everyone's happy about where he's positioning the marker boys. Dino's put the cans three kilometres out to sea. They're just outside of Fiji. And, uh, and I've, I've never swum as far as Fiji, so I'm very nervous. Like, heavy. Massive swim. Wait, do you know? Are you, are you sure a few of the boys are saying it's pretty big, the swim? Well, they're lifeguards, aren't they? They men or mice. We'll see what they say. We're going to move it if we have to, if everyone's like way off it. And unless Hoppo says change it, I'm not, I'm not going to change it. Like, Ah, so hilarious. Dino's a swimmer and he bloody makes it a million K swim. He obviously wants to win. Yeah, that's right. I'll do anything to win. I uh, set a long swim course because that's my best leg and uh, that's where I'll gain the most advantage. I was out there on the jet ski trying to set the course and do my best and I got three people whinging at me and I just said, oh, give me a break, beat it, you know? <laughs> and they all went quiet after that, so they're not whinging to me anymore. They've stopped complaining and taken action. It's a 2K swim. Yeah, it's a 2K swim. That's oh, just what I said about the You just take them in and don't say anything. Simple as that. I'm going to go over there. I'm going to go and move the cans in a bit so no one... They know they won't know until it gets there, so it'll be too late. Kobe sneaks the cans closer to shore. Meanwhile, a crowd gathers to place charity bets on their favourite lifeguards. Oh, up from Brad Mallion. Brad Mallion, right, he's 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 Mallion. Meet your friendly and strangely familiar local bookie. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bondi Beach for the annual lifeguard challenge. Tonight, we've got about 20-odd competitors. There's Hoppo. 
the boss, a veteran waterman. Go Hoppo, 50 on Hoppo. 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 Maxi, the young gun trainee. A fit young bloke, it's his first time in the big match, 14 to 1. Maxi's going to do it. That's not the same. <laughs> Dino, one of the best surf swimmers in the country. Dino, please. Dino. Bisho, super fish and super athlete. Bisho. Bisho, yeah, he's a beautiful man. And then you come to last year's winner. Scotty Thompson, 43-year-old Ironman legend. The Ironman race starts with a run from Bondi to Tamarama, followed by a swim leg to Bronte, then a board paddle, all the way back to Bondi. Everyone got the course? Everyone ready? Competitors start in handicap waves every two minutes. Ready, go! Among the front runners is dark horse Brad Mallion, recently back on the lifeguard team. Get on the start line, you three minuters. Hoppo and Maxi are among the next wave. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Let them go! Let them go, bring it home. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> When true thoroughbreds Bisho and Harry start, the first group has already reached Tamarama. Tell you what, they're going into the water now. They're going out wide onto the reef, I think. Brad Malin's leading the way, taking him out to sea. It's going to be tough for him out here. There's about five, six footers coming through. Harry's is on fire. Look at the determination. Oh, Bisho straight behind him. Right on, Scotty. Off you go, son. Oh, Ironman legend Scotty Thompson is backmarker. At 43, he's still good enough to be handicapped 10 minutes behind the front runners. Scotty Thompson. Scotty Thompson. His kids know their dad is still a contender. Scotty Thompson's coming through. Well, it's a water. That's when he starts. The first wave of lifeguards are about to start the swim leg of the Ironman Challenge. But the dangerous swell presents problems. Oh, they're getting smoked on the reef. <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable conditions tonight. Really incredible conditions. Tell you what, Tez, we've got about a five-footer about to break on their head now. Kobe, are you on the jet ski next to the leader? Dark horse Brad Mallion takes the lead around the first cam. But they're starting to close up already. The swim is horrendous across from Tamar over to Bronny. So I think the guys that can really swim, your Bishos and your Scotty Thompsons, are going to really mow through this pack once they get in the water. Bisho starts the swim leg. Go Bisho, go Bisho, go Bisho. Yeah, he's a crowd favourite, Bisho. As Brad rounds the second cam. Defending champion Scotty Thompson is already in striking range and showing off his Ironman pedigree. Everyone's on their way, boys. Yeah, I think we've got Brad Marion here in the first pack. But there's a surprise as the first lifeguard to finish the swim leg emerges. No way, you won't believe it's the old sea dogs arrived. Hoppo, Hoppo's come out first at Brunny. Hoppo's coming, Brunny. There you go, Hoppo. Uh, Hop's got a massive lead. It's a long paddle, though. It's a really long paddle. A couple of millions. He's taking over millions. So, how did Hoppo manage to sneak past Brad? Hey, you want to see Hoppo swim around any cans? Oh, he's gone one to him. He's after some. Did he swim around both cans or take a shortcut? There's a bit of conjecture. He didn't swim around any cans. Yeah. Oh, yeah, He's using my old trick. While the controversy rages, young Maxi does his best to overtake fellow trainee Blake in the board league. Maxi sneaks over a looming wave. Blake, not so lucky. Scotty gains more ground on the youngsters as he starts the board leg. But the main action is up ahead. And they're having a ball! Woo! Look at Scotty and Harry go. Dark horse Brad Mallion picks up a wave that should take him to victory. Hoppo has slipped back into second. First across the line, Brad Mallion. Great effort. Great effort, Brad Mallion. Great effort. 
Hoppo heads over the line shortly after and straight into a protest. Hopkins is under a cloud that looks as dark as that over there with the lightning and everything. They're all saying he's cut the course and as a boss, if he has, we'll scrub at him. Oh, yeah, I never seen someone else. <laughs> protest, protest. Highly favoured thoroughbred Bisho manages third. Great effort, Bisho. Great effort by Bisho. Bisho, Harry, Scotty Thompson. Remarkably, 43-year-old Scotty Thompson has come in fourth despite a 10-minute handicap. Young Maxie, everyone. Young Maxie. First, oh. first year in the big tournament. Johnny Robson, great effort. He's 59 years old. How was hard. It's worked, shall I? What well, is this year? The winner tonight was Brad Mallion. Oh, I thought Hoppo was just going to kill me, but I don't know where he came from in the swim, though. I've got no idea. I don't, I don't know if he went around the, the cans or what. There's going to be a steward in, inquiry. <laughs> Next day, one question remains on everyone's lips. Do you swear, Hoppo, do you swear on film that you, you did swear not cheat? All your hair. Yeah, yeah. But you, you went around both cans. Both cans. You went around both cans? In the swim Even leg. if they definitely saw one can. <laughs> <laughs> Look down the eye of the camera and say, oh, in the swim leg, I went around both cans. I went around both cans. <laughs> Look at the camera. <laughs> he cheated. Blade and cheater. <laughs> Perhaps we'll never know. But a far more important issue is still being debated. Brad won the lifeguard challenge oh, in board shorts. But now there's new proof that sluggos are what every bloke needs. Have a look at this character. Yeah, mate, hey, mate. Hey, mate. What's going on? What are you hiding, boys? What are you hiding? Oh, what can you what can you hold, Bishop? Hey, I like to take the security measures of uh, keeping everything in my own in case uh, in case mum rings and says my other speedos are ready. I mean, hello, princess. You're like there's something for the ladies. Hey, keeps right. them fit and healthy. Car keys, of course. Car keys. All waterproof. Of course, don't forget zinc cream. Whoops. Oh. <laughs> We're gonna go real low for that one. That's there. What's the other thing? Well, there's nothing left. That's the trouble. <laughs> but my missus is still happy, so that's OK. Debate over. Sluggos win. Pants down. <laughs> Next on Bondi Rescue. Get out there quick, boy. Eight rips and two near drownings. You right, Dean? <laughs> A fisherman swept off rocks. I said swim and he couldn't even say I can't.